You're tuned in to the Trial Technology and Litigation Support Podcast with your hosts, Rob and Josh. Sit back and enjoy interviews with industry leaders as we discuss everything from new trends to old war stories. Interested in being a guest on the podcast? Contact us on Twitter at Trial Tech Cast. Now, here are your hosts, Rob and Josh. Rob Hilt, Josh Collar here with you, and uh, today is going to be definitely an interesting show. We are talking with Eric Pubins today uh, with OnQ Technologies and the OnQ software, which is currently being sold and used uh, throughout the country for trial presentation. And you know, there's always been the big three, Josh, that uh, everybody's heard of. There's Sanction, there's Trial Director, there's Visionary, and new player on the block. And I think today will definitely be an interesting conversation. And I know I've got a lot of questions about their software. I'm looking forward to it as well. You know, my interest is really, you know, the voyage that got them there. I'm looking forward to, to hearing that story. So those other people out there in, uh, in podcast land can kind of be inspired and see that there is a, a, a path to, to stardom. What do you think about the, you know, I, one thing that I've noticed, and, and I know that we'll, we'll certainly talk with Eric about this, is people's hesitance to change anything uh, in the industry. For instance, I'll give you a great example. It took a long time for me to decide that. Now I do everything, you know. I, of course, the litigation support world. I handle, you know, numerous trials. But at the same time, I started my career doing video, so I still will shoot video depositions. It's something that I still love. They went to a tapeless workflow probably a year and a half, two years ago, where everybody was shooting directly to the SD cards or the P2 cards or whatever, and. I avoided that for so long, and I'm a huge fan of change. I'm a huge adopter of technology. I think the new things are great. Uh, I think any time you can add something new to your tool belt, it's great. But I was not an early adopter of the tapeless workflow. I was not an early adopter of MPEG-4, uh, which I just released a video on my YouTube channel where I go through and show somebody how to create a stable MPEG-4 video uh, to use in trial presentation software. What do you think, Josh, people's reactions to new software uh, that comes out on the market for people like us that are in the hot seat? What do you gauge the reaction to be? Do you think people are pretty slow to adopt new technology? I think the busier you are, the harder it is to change course midstream. Uh, the, the software that seems to catch on quickly is the software that takes what you're doing now and enhances it in a way that it's worth the investment of time and conversion. Uh, so that may be it has a feature that's going to save you time somewhere else, and that, that learning curve that you invest in the short term makes a difference, or it may be a solution to a problem you didn't even know you had. Uh, but I do see in this industry, especially in those of you that are listening and, and still having to deliver documents that someone wants to open in WordPerfect will know what I mean, uh, the, 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 the change is gradual. And I think that's a good thing. Uh, I, of course, people like you and me and, and most of the people that are listening to this podcast are probably early adapters and they won't be so interested in what's coming next. Uh, so people like us will try things out, test them out. Uh, and, you know, sometimes to a fault, I, I find uh, if, you, if you look at my iPhone screen, you'll see I'm downloading an app almost every day just to try it out. Um, but I think in general that change is a good thing. I think that um, change as a gradual or great change as a way of taking things to the next level is good. Uh, change for the sake of change, I think that's what people are afraid of. I don't know. You know, I, I agree with that 100 percent, and I agree with the adage of, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And so a lot of times, you know, people are uh, – I remember when I made the switch from, from sanction to trial director. Um, you know, I was a sanction user from, you know, 99 to whenever, and when I made the switch, I made it right in the middle of trial. And so I called I called Richard Katz on a Friday afternoon, and I said uh, I'm fixing to make a switch because I have to. And I said, Rich, how do I uh, 
how do I learn this thing quickly? And he said, lock yourself in the room over the weekend. The concepts are the same. The only thing that changes is the syntax. So the the only thing that's going to change is the terminology, but the concepts still remain and are the same. And Monday morning, I was running trial director in the courtroom on the document side. I still had my videos loaded in sanction, and so I would alt-tab between documents and videos because I wasn't comfortable with the video module. And at the time, trial director was still three separate programs. And so I wasn't comfortable yet. And I think that may be one thing, you know, we'll talk to Eric about. He may agree that some people, they can use this software as an add-on. And so I'm really interested in hearing what he's got to say about on cue. And once again, you know, this is a new podcast. And for those of you listening, you know, we're, we want to talk to industry leaders. We want to talk to people who are out here doing these things and are in trial. And if you've got some great stories or you've got something you want to talk about or a topic that you think would be of interest, make sure you follow us on Twitter at Trial Tech Cast. And if you just follow us on Twitter, you'll be able to uh, send us a tweet. Um, and then, of course, uh, you know, you can uh, send a private message uh, through through Twitter. And that's just that just seems to be the easiest way to follow anybody anymore. We don't have a Facebook. We don't have a we, we're certainly on LinkedIn on the trial technology group and many other groups. But I, uh, I think we should fire this thing up and uh, let's bring Eric on and see what he's got to say. Eric, welcome to the uh, Trial Technology and Lit Support podcast. Thank you. Happy to be here. <laughs> now, before before Rob gets all into the um, the latest and greatest technology, and uh, what I want to do is take us back a little bit. Uh, you know, and we're kind of like a, a special fraternity, us hot seat technicians, us. Uh, consultants and uh, we've all got some some time in this but some of the people out there might be wondering what university did you go to to become a hot seat technician what what college what courses and uh, I think it's always interesting to lead people down the path to, to how we wound up doing what we're doing and and I think it'd be curious to, to find out how you went from a uh, fine arts degree at Sam Houston State University to uh, being a, a software developer for for high level litigation, so uh, why don't you kind of take us through a little bit of your your history from uh, from let's, let's let's start after graduation and tell us how you kind of came along from from that um, that uh, multimedia degree of uh, creative arts to uh, to to where you are today. Well, yeah, sure. Well, you know, a lot of that radio, television, film background and degree was. Uh, was really hands on at Sam at Sam Houston. That's the way it is there. It's real hands on. You get your own TV station. You get to mess with and stuff like that. So I did a lot of technical stuff. Um, got into computers when I was in college. When uh, you know, email was brand new, and you know, signing up and dropping courses online was brand new and stuff like that. So you always had to figure stuff out, <clears throat> and there weren't a lot of people around who could tell you how to do it. So you had to figure out how to fix things on your own, which is kind of what we do now. We just fix people's problems. <laughs> So basically, leaving school, uh, I'd heard there was a uh, or there was a job opening. There was someone uh, looking at legal media in Houston, actually, uh, for a depot shooter. Didn't know what that meant, uh, but found out it was. Uh, pretty easy, uh, being that I've been using cameras like that for years, and uh, it more of a clo- closer to the point of what we're talking about, editing those depositions. We had you know hundreds of hours of depositions to edit, and it was all tape to tape. And I still carry contempt for the tape to tape editing of depositions and the highlighted transcripts and how long it would take. And I think a lot of that drives always wanting to make a better piece of software to to not have to stay up all night uh, just to just to put you know a couple of new page lines into something that it should be it should be you know 2015 something that happens really quickly um, so yeah, th- th- that drives a lot of it which is having that kind of video uh, the video background but that's what wound me up into it they said uh, some folks over at Legal Media had gone there and said we know that that your graduates know how to use cameras and we need people who know how to use cameras. Uh, in a conference room. So it was as simple as that. 
I was a little concerned there for a second because I know you're from Texas. And when they say anything was shooting, I thought maybe you'd come on in with a. <laughs> <laughs> no, just the, the most boring kind of shooting you can do. Depot you, know, shooting. I, you know, I'll tell you what. The funny thing is I'm from Midland and being from the Midland Odessa area, uh, my wife has we have we have things up in our house that say, you know, Texas, my home sweet home. And I mean, we have like all this Texas stuff in Tennessee. So, you know, uh, don't don't start knocking Texas, Josh. <laughs> I'll save it for another another time. But I was between a uh, between a um, Porsche and a big rig truck or a, a dually uh, quad cab. And I made the mistake of visiting my buddy in Texas on the week I was going to make the decision. And uh <laughs> The, re- the rest is gas guzzler history. But uh, so 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 you go from you go from college into this depot, this depot shooting uh, work. And then uh, I, then you move on to 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 stay in the, the uh, industry and start working more on, on trial work, I assume. Uh, take us a little bit through that and then and then kind of walk us through how you started thinking about not just using what was handed to you, but maybe you could create a better mousetrap. Well, you know, that didn't take a lot of thought because what happened was I went from that company uh, to FTI where they worked on their own software called TrialMax over there. And I just had a real serious interest in it. And, you know, one of my partners now, Kurt Govertson, was the uh, was the product manager for Trial Max where they did a, this rewrite of it um, to come out with their, their version 6, which was a... It was a big update at the time, and I, it was early 2000s when that happened, I think. And uh, when he got tired of doing it, he knew that I had a, a strong passion for it. And my partner, also now Donnie Guillory, um, as well, was heavily involved in it. Um, so I was the product manager of that for years just because, you know, we got a, we got a big charge out of being able to do that and, and have the ability to, to – uh, to change the tools, to be working in a trial and say, uh, you know, this should work a different way and it should be faster. And not just say it, but take that to developers who would make it happen. That was really cool to do, you know, without even having to use your own money and to have <laughs> no pressure for, you know, external support or anything like that. We didn't have to worry about it. So it was great school for doing it in the future. I never thought of it like that. Um, but when, you know, when we left and then uh, even before I left, I, you know, the next product manager of, of, of TrialMax who had a lot of passion for was Nancy Schlafer, who also works with us now um, and deals with, you know, deals with our support here. But, you know, when we left, not only did we did we miss some of the features, what I really missed was that ability to say, hey, this needs to be better and we should be able to change it. Um, so, you know, I just talked to some of my partners and we're like, you know, we know we know how to do this. We've spent 10 years almost doing this, just not the selling it part and supporting it part. And I'm sure we can figure that out. Um, you know, so how are we going to pay for it? Well, we're not going to borrow money and go into debt to pay for it. And I had friends mm-hmm. over at RLM and uh, we talked to, to Guy Jobert, um, at, you know, just RLM at the time. Now they're Trial Graphics RLM. They're a much right. bigger company. They were bigger than us then and more established than us then. So, you know, thankfully they were totally cool about saying, yeah, let's do this. I think, I think, you know, I know that we, we do have people that are good at this. And if we teamed up, we could really make a dent in this, uh, in this industry. So, you know, they've been fantastic partners in this journey, the whole way of, uh, saying let's, let's start from scratch. Let's, uh, Let's do what we know how to do, and let's see what happens when we really put it out there on the market, and we have control over that. And how much of this would you say is um, is the development of the software for 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 like you said your own use? Like, I'd love to have a soft piece of software that does this, and now you got the people to do it. And how much of it is? Um, trying to kind of think of what you need to package for somebody that's not as technical, uh, you know, a law firm that's not 20 years into hot seat uh, work. Uh, how, do, how does that go about? How do you guys decide uh, what what's a bell, what's a whistle, and what's just going to be too complicated for the layperson? And then the other question I'll have after that is, how did you go about taking it from technology to um, something you're developing for yourself to what you've done now, which is really, really 
good job of getting the word out and marketing and and turning it from internal software or tool for you into um, this this huge campaign to make the the greater community aware of it and its and its and its worthiness of use. Well, let me start on that second question before I forget it. We haven't actually had a marketing campaign, so if it appears that we have one, that is fantastic. <laughs> um, because okay. what we decided to do was a soft release uh, where we're just going to say we're going to make it for sale because we've now been beta testing it for a couple of years. And we could have gone on forever saying it's not done yet. It's not done yet. Well, it was done enough at a certain point to where even we had beta testers saying, look, it's done enough. I have friends who want it and I know you're not taking new beta testers. Just put it out there. People will, early adopters will pay for it and we'll get a lot out of it. And they were right. So that's what we did. Um, but anything that's been said, the marketing that we do besides having a website is well, I mean, agreeing to do an interview like this, agreeing to, uh, uh, you know, there, there was an article in Law Technology News that actually came out before we launched, like a couple of days before we were ready to launch, uh, it came out. Um, you know, we didn't plant that. Uh, one of the beta testers wanted to write it, John Cleaves. Um, besides that, the main marketing strategy is go to court and let whoever's on the other side see it. And, and and let word of mouth work from there. And that's not to say someday we won't do more marketing, um, but, but so far we really haven't, and we haven't put a lot of thought into that. It's been keeping up with dealing with how we handle support and sales, which was new to us. You know, like I said, developing the software that we use at trial, using it in trial and improving on it, we know we knew how to do that, and we know we were good at that. Um, just different people on the team are really good at different things. Right. But the new thing to us was the selling it. So the last thing we needed to do was make some huge amount of noise about how it's for sale. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and, then, and then, you know, if, if things came crashing in. So what we, we actually are getting the kind of slow, linear growth that we need to be able to properly deal with the, uh, the customers that we have right now. And could you repeat? Oh, wait a second. I think I remember what you said. Um, it was how do we decide what features are for ourselves and what features are for um, less power users? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Which, you know, which do exist more so than the power users do. Um, you know, I've I never really thought about that. But if I was pinned down, I'd say it's about 80, 20 on for ourselves. And when I say ourselves, I'm including you guys and anybody else that's a power user that uses, you know, that's a that's a professional trial tech that's only worrying about what's going on as far as trial tech stuff. Right. Um because we all, you know, we all essentially do the same thing and we have the same challenges. And so that's why a lot of times we'll say like look, everybody could definitely, you know, everybody would be better off if it would accept page line imports that have words typed in the middle of them. So let's make sure that happens. You know, everybody would be better off and could go a little faster if, you know, we didn't have to reformat this or that or the other um, and could do and could, uh, well, you know, everybody would be better off if you could just click on a, a bunch of designations and see how long they all are um, and, see how, and see how they break down without having to say, let me get back to you on that. So that kind of stuff is, is, is for us. And, and we really do almost focus exclusively on that but that doesn't mean that it's a hard it's like it's something difficult to use um the stuff that's for like the like a, like say a paralegals out there and they're not going to even mess with video and all they need to do is organize some documents and print some documents it's already easy for them um the way the notebooks work i mean they can already be sorted different ways you can put things in there however you want you just drag stuff in if you want to notebook with 600 exhibits in it just make a text list of 600 exhibits and import it and it's done and you can print it at that in that order and the training that i give that type of user usually lasts about five minutes in a war room and i see and i say like i'm not going to tell you that much because it's just going to be overwhelming no one can learn 10 things at the same time right so here's a couple of basic simple things you need to know and if you have questions let me know and it works really it works really well like that. I think I think we already have a pretty intuitive, you know, once you get past a couple of you know, just a couple of basic things you need to know about the user interface, like how you can go to different uh, 
there's not different real, there's not different components in OnQ. It's just different layouts of the of the windows, the same as like Photoshop and Premiere. And I actually see the the the, the newest version of Premiere coming out this month has what is like our workflow ribbon, which is a bunch of different uh, screen layouts that just go across the top of your program. Right. Um, and where, where they say, you know, this one's for video editing, this one's for annotating documents. They have one saying this is for audio editing, this is for whatever. Right. And um, they take a lot of, uh, or that, that's actually where we take a lot of our cues from. So I got to tell you, I don't use the other I don't know much if about the other packages that that we compete with. I just don't have the time or the inclination to care, frankly, because <laughs> I, I just I, in, and and when we imp- when we improve something, it's always based on a thought or some feedback from one of our users, uh, you know, who's using it, trying to improve what we have and not trying to play me too uh, with the other with the other players. Yeah, you know, I mean, from my experience, it's 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 a challenge to move from one software to another to begin with. So, um, kind of evolving for the people that are in your audience that are using it makes sense, at least to me. Uh, so that you know, you're you're taking it up a notch for those people that are going to come along with you. Yeah, and you know, and every in and, and this industry too. I mean, I you know, I would have uh, myself. If, if I heard something new came out, I would be testing it immediately. Um, I'd be I'd be all about seeing seeing what it had in it. And at first, I was a little surprised that uh, tons of people in our industry don't want to do that. They don't want to change what they've been using for years. They might be using a three versions back, you know, on on trial director or sanction. But then I realized that that shouldn't surprise me. A, this is a scary job, and you don't want to go into court. You know, all eyes are on you, and people get really angry really fast uh, when you screw up. But it's just like anywhere else where there's that same curve of adoption, where there's the early adopters, then there's the, you know, the, they just want the newest thing. And then the next people, you know, the next group after that, they're looking at what the early adopters did and thinking, well, I need to do that. I mean, most of that stuff's like in the middle, and there's always going to be laggards, and there's going to be people, you know, way down the line uh, behind that in adoption. And so just if you, realize that you know like, like we have a you know we realize that we know, like the tipping point's coming uh we're not even close to the uh, to the high point on that adoption curve yet and and i think and i think the market gets bigger and bigger all the time as uh, as more and more people start to do this themselves which you know we we think a lot about that with onq we are not trying to make this is the easiest, simple to use program there is. People are doing that already. We're saying this is the most powerful program that lets you do very difficult things that are very specific to working in this industry faster than anyone else does. What makes um, you what what makes you um, more what makes you more powerful than than the competitors out there, Eric? It's the video. It's uh, it's the video. When I say the video, I'm talking about the getting the page lines in and editing them. So from this, from 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 importing the video, from importing your page lines, where you can just do one shot and have 45 witnesses and 10,000 designations, and you can do that all in one shot with a with a pretty sloppy text file of uh, how mailed to you. However, you get those designations. From that to editing those. To reporting on those, to just at a glance knowing how long they are and how that breaks down on how long your designations are versus how long their des- their counters are, and then how long your counters are. All that stuff is just is at a glance, and it's just super super fast, and nothing nothing really touches that. And when people learn how to use that functionality, and do you know one, two, or even you know three or four trials? You're you're done. You know all of it at that point. Uh, you cannot go back. You cannot you <laughs> cannot go back to where you don't have you know the first off. There's the, the color coded reports uh, that we do that that tell the client up front when they look at it how long everything is, how long each type of designation is, counters, affirmatives, whatever tells you what what documents you've linked to pop up um, that's the other thing it's really easy to, to script the documents to pop up and they go all the way you know the call out goes all the way across the screen you can change the size of your uh, of your picture and picture when that happens and it uh, uh, you don't have to touch that again 
you know, when you put it together right. Uh, so, you know, in, in court, that's one thing I've, I've, I've noticed that people using on cue just, just hit go on a video full of documents and you can sit back and sleep for a couple of hours. Um, hopefully not and get caught doing that, <laughs> but in theory you could. What do you think that if, if, how do you deal with, you know, you're, you're talking about video, so how, how do you deal with video coming into on cue? And the reason I say that is because we're all familiar with the XML, we're familiar with the MDB, we're familiar with the CMS, the compound media storage, we're familiar with all of those. Uh, we're familiar with how to get them. So how does a user deal with getting their synced video to on cue? Yeah, so we don't have any sort of like special proprietary way to do that. Um, we didn't want to reinvent wheels, and we didn't want to waste any time, especially up front. We wanted to get working and get using it because we needed it. So we said the simplest one to deal with is the sanction MDB that has all the information you need, and everyone can make one. Um, all the vendors are making them. So that and the MPEG-1. Uh, right now, we're, we're, we, we're, there's no no cute tricks, no bunch of different uh, codecs, no reading off of an author DVD, which I've never found useful. I'm sure some people have. I just haven't. Well, if they and, figured that out, tell me how it worked. Yeah, well, and it's it, but it's uh, you know it's rock solid uh, when it comes to playing back video, which is another reason we don't tinker too much with what's working right now. And that's not to say that'll be forever. Uh, but we like how that works, and we like bringing it in. And you know, another thing on video before I forget it, that is a huge differentiator, is the fact that you can work remotely uh, for someone else. So if I have if I have the MPEGs that you have, you can send me an XML file that has the transcript and all your designations in there, and then say we have the same documents as well. I can uh, I can sit and and make make treatments, make call outs and highlights and link those documents up to it while you're in court and and send you back just an XML file, which will then, you know, I've fine-tuned the front and the back of everything, I've made any other edits, and it also brings over all of those annotations, all those highlights and everything, and it has them triggered to pop up at the exact right time. Mm -hmm. So you can be in court and hear, you need to play this back and have the documents in it in an hour and have someone else do it while you sit there and work on a cross. And that's assuming that the paths are the same, correct? Paths are completely irrelevant. Really? There's no, yeah, there's no, there's no path uh, issue in, in OnCue. Uh, OnCue uses what's called relative pathing. And it just, it sees, it has the, the, the case database. So there's a folder structure around your database. And it doesn't matter what your path is. It doesn't matter what your drive letter is or anything like that. It, wherever you've opened that database from, it finds the folders that are around that database. So when you guys are dealing with, when you guys are dealing with PDF files, that's another thing that I think you guys do um, relatively well. You're still, you're, you're processing those on the back end for the user to even make PDF call faster. Is that right? Well, yeah, that's one of my that's one of my favorite things. Is we so one of the first things we wanted to put in because we knew everyone would want it. I want it uh, was PDF support, even though TIFFs and JPEGs are going to run a lot faster, right? right. And so they're gonna they're they're a lot snappier when you're flipping through pages and you're bringing them up. And we just could not get PDFs to be fast enough without really cranking down the quality of how they looked. And so what we came up with was put the PDFs in there split the PDF into individual pages in folders in the background. That happens really, really fast. And then what it does is it lets you start working on those PDFs, but the whole time you have it open, it's converting those PDFs one at a time to TIFFs. So I used to, say I threw in something with 20, 30,000 pages. I would just have, I would let it run all night. I would take those 30,000 pages, drop it in there, let it run all night while it converted them or convert them in something outside of it. But OnQ was converting as well as it added it to the database, but uh, not anymore. Now it just pops it right in there that 20,000 pages or so might take a couple of minutes. And so in a couple of minutes, you're in there working and they're just going boom, 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 boom in the background. And there's a status bar up in the corner telling you, you know, I'm on number 3,000 of 20,000. 
pages. And if you leave it open long enough, it finishes. And if you open, <laughs> if you open it up on a network from other machines, you start going twice as fast at that point too. Is it? I mean, and I guess where I'm, what I'm, what I'm wondering. That's where the pathing doesn't matter because you're you're parsing that down in the background and so the the data i'm i'm guessing you're you're access based and not sql correct it is access based yeah so, so you so, can get in there so therefore it's it's parsing all that in the background and doing it relatively quick i guess <laughs> That's Josh. Sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, it's, it's no problem. We all have. That was probably a client calling you, telling you you need to get to work. So I would suggest that you go download your demo of on queue right now. And you could have processed in the time it took <laughs> to take that phone call. You could have processed 20,000 documents out of a PDF. That begs the question, Eric, why then use PDF? Why don't we just uh, parse them all out to TIFF anyway? They'll load them in that way. Because you've got to do that ahead of time. I mean, go ahead. But I mean, you don't want to. <laughs> that's the point is you don't have to do it ahead of time anymore. I mean, you can pull someone can FTP you their their 45 new documents and they might have 5000 pages. Well, you can sit and you can knock them out to TIFF ahead of time and then put them in. Or you can just drag those in on queue and it's up and running immediately. And you still get the speed of TIFFs because it'll be done. And I don't know. However long it takes, 30 minutes it'll be done. But until that point, it's still moving really fast because when it goes to when you click on a something a page that's still a PDF, it immediately just turns that to TIFF, and then it's, you're working with a TIFF. Are any of your competitors doing the same thing? Not that I'm aware of. You know, like I say, I don't use them, and I'm not you know doing that sort of sort of research. Um, but I'm not aware of anyone doing something like that, and that's a pretty recent addition that we have there too. I think we'll, I think we'll find out uh, once this show gets published. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think this is gonna. I think this is gonna draw down some. Uh, this is gonna bring some people out of the woodwork. Uh, the next question I have, Eric, you brought up a great point, and and I want to go through two scenarios with you just from my standpoint. And hey, my opinion uh, plus a dollar will get you a cup of coffee, not even at Starbucks. But the first thing I want to talk about is you mentioned mentioned video and that's your powerhouse that's your that's your workhorse but you mentioned mpeg one right now uh the industry seems to be moving to mpeg four and i i i will tell you you know if you want to know what the workflow is i'd be glad to share it but i'm not going to waste people's time with what it was down in new orleans you're very familiar with the amount of video depositions that we had down there in their native mpeg1 format uh were large there was a lot of video that kim fontana and his group put out um why why not why stay are you planning on staying with mpeg1 or your developers currently looking at going to that mpeg4 wrapper and that xvid codec because more videographers are moving toward the tapeless workflow well i mean i'm not seeing that stuff yet um no one else really has asked for it yet um so i would say one reason we haven't yet is i think what i was saying earlier which was I don't want to uh, fix something that's not broken, but I, I know what you're saying. I would like to see that. And uh, I talked to our developer not a month ago about what it would take, and he actually has a background as, as a Mac developer, um, even though this is a, a Windows program. I'm running it on a Mac all the time myself. Um, how we can uh, get it to take QuickTime files and you know MP4, everything else. Uh, he said it's, you know, it's doable, and he's looking into it, so... Yeah, I mean, there, I mean, there's your answer is we're going to that and there's no reason not to. Uh, we're just going to make sure it works right before we uh, push it out there. Second question I have is my workflow with, with lawyers is, is relatively simple. I, I don't deal with exhibits and the way I kind of do everything deals with an electronic number in the bottom right hand corner. Call it a Bates number if you want to. Um, but it's the easiest way that I've found and uh, of doing it. And, and, and I've done it the same way for, you know, 10, 15 years and, and it's worked and it, it works for me and for my clients. But how, 
let's say I've got a, a Bates number on a document of 2000, Eric, and, and I want to um, give the ID number to uh, my documents. One, I'm going to load 15,000 documents inside of OnQ, and I want them numbered 1 to 15,000, and I want to be able on my presentation mode window, because I always work in dual monitors, so what's up on the screen, I want to be able to get hot, get focus on that screen, and then I want to be able to type in 2000, and that calls up document number 2000. Is that something that's uh, rel- relatively easy inside of OnQ? Yeah, that's it. So there's so basically we have the hotkeys in the presentation mode, which we call OnQ Live. Is so you hit X and that tells it it's coming. So the hotkeys for like call out and highlight are C and H and very simple things like that that don't even need modifiers. So. Uh, not you know some of them do, but but the ba- the basics don't. Um, so in order to say here comes something that that you're supposed to bring up, and that's so that's where you hit X, and then Anki says, okay, what do you want to do? So if you type two thousand and hit enter, it's going to say, okay, is there a document ID that's two thousand I can bring up the first page of? No, there's not. Okay, is there anything that's been named two thousand with a secondary way to bring it up as the name, not the ID? No. Okay. Is there something with a Bates of 2000 on one of these pages? Yes, okay, and so it would bring that up. So basically, it, it'll just go through. There's no special thing you need to do to bring up any of those. So there's three different ways you can bring up a document, ID, name, or Bates. Have you guys spent any time with uh, you know with Microsoft to become Microsoft certified? I know as a as a Microsoft certified solution developer myself, one of the things when I when if I if I submit something for peer review or for Microsoft partnership, uh, I have to have three ways in order to do every function. So there has to be three ways to get to it. And you know norm, normally it's normally it's a double click, normally it's a right click in a menu, and normally it's a top menu bar. Is it the same way for you guys? There's three ways to do everything. Uh, it's like that, uh, but we've never thought to go to Microsoft for any sort of blessing. Uh, well, I mean, we've thought of it. I, I shouldn't say we haven't thought of it because I actually have people have had people mention it. Uh, we just haven't done it. And uh, yeah, I'd say there's sometimes more than three ways to do everything. It's a little much. I mean, I frankly try to simplify it a little bit, but uh, you know, <laughs> uh, the, both the people on the development team and the customers are all trial techs, and you know how we are. What everyone kind of wants to, everyone wants their options to the point of uh, option overload, and that's that's actually one of my main roles that I see myself as is to throttle back the creep that would happen if everyone got what they asked for because I, I don't think everyone always knows what they want and what they start asking for is something that they've seen somewhere else that doesn't necessarily match that you know that that wouldn't make anything better. What do you think? Uh... Where, where are you right now in the market? Where are you um, with users? What, are, what, what kind of user feedback are you getting? Uh, what kind of retention rate do you have um, from people, you know, downloading the program, running the demo, then doing the buy, and then saying, I'm never turning back? How, how's, how's that going? You know, I wish I had a number on that, but I could tell you just anecdotally, um, the feedback is fantastic, and it's exactly where we thought it would be. With which is the uh, once you do a couple, you do not turn back. Um, we couldn't. We know. You know. We know all of our users, and and remember how many internal users we have between Core and you know RLM Trial Graphics. How many people they have, and how many new users they're bringing on over there since you know RLM being our being our partner in this joint venture. When they 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 last year acquired Trial Graphics and got all and got all of their techs and so those people are all moving and being trained on OnQ right now as well and there's very little pushback on that um, and but once somebody does a trial or two they're fine and we're getting that same thing outside as well now somebody might get the demo and say. So basically, there's two kinds of people that try it out. There's the people that say, "This has changed my life. I'm never going back." You know, I I know I want this. I'm I'm buying five annual subscriptions right now. Um, and then there's the people that 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 I would contend probably haven't used it that much, but banged around in it and said, "Okay, not yet. Maybe once you get a couple of more features that are important to me, like." You know, like we don't take load files yet. We will very soon, but we don't yet. Like, 
I never use load files personally, so it doesn't, I don't think that much about it, but I know there's some law firms that do a lot. That's going to come up. Um, but I mean, we had a number of companies and law firms completely standardized immediately as soon as they started using it. Um, and we haven't had anyone who has actually signed up and started paying for it stop doing that yet. So they, you know, they, yeah. so, so the reten- the retention is, is amazing. And, and that actually that's what we're banking on with our tipping point is that retention and then, and then just, you know, creeping throughout the, uh, the industry. I'm going to ask a couple of questions and I, I, I'm, I'm certainly not going to put you on the spot on this, but I want to go to your website and I want to look at your about section and I want to talk about a couple of things on here and I want to deal strictly right now with the what on cue is not sure. it says on your website you are not a, contri- a trial consulting company we make software but don't provide courtroom support we have other companies for that and you have an asterisk by the word companies and then the asterisk in the footnote says on cue is jointly owned and operated by core legal concepts and RLM trial graphics LLC we make software, but don't provide courtroom support. We have other companies for that. What's the difference? Uh, OnQ is its own company that is a legally a joint venture between RLM and Core. So Core Legal Concepts owns 50% of OnQ. RLM Trial Graphics owns 50% of OnQ. Basically, we just fund it. We just fund the cash flow necessary to pay developers and uh and and support and support folks. Do you think that do you think that could be you know do you think it could be construed maybe for the user and and what I'm doing is giving you the opportunity to say here's what this means. We make software but don't provide courtroom support. And I think there's other companies out here that a lot of the end users that are using their products have have maybe gotten a sour taste in their mouth because not only are they buying the software but they're buying the software from their largest competitor. Uh, Mm -hmm. And I think when I read that and I see we make software but don't provide courtroom support, it's like, finally, I got a group of guys here that I can buy some software from, and they're not going to try to turn around and steal my client. Right. (laughs) Is is that what that means, Eric? It, it is what that means, and you know, and we, you know, we have our, our an agreement. You know that, that that's not, you know, when people come to OnQ, we don't try to get their courtroom work. Um, we're not interested in that in that at all. Um, Core does fine on their own. RLM obviously does fine on their own. And the last thing we wanted to do was uh, get into trying to, you know, do our our regular business with this. I mean, this is, you know, this is a, it's a totally separate thing. It's a, it's a separate side project for us. Now, I I mean, I spend a ton of my time on it, but I mean, there's very few full-time employees at OnQ and we're split up between the two other companies. I mean, I spend most of my time talking to, to, you know, a guy who's been one of my best friends since we were in seventh grade, Derek Palisol at, at RLM. And, you know, we're not about to join up together and try to steal each other's work or any other, you know, anything else that comes in. Hey, uh, hey Eric, do you, yeah. do you find that being, um, uh, I remember talking to another one of the developers here in the industry that created one of those, as you call the, uh, I, I think, I don't know if you used the word entry level or the, the basic tools so, so that lawyers can go in and use their own, you know, go in with a basic tool in the court. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I talked to him, he explained to me that they developed that one and, and decided to make it a basic tool so that it wouldn't, you know, take away from their trial support work. So the cases that they normally went to got called in on, there was the software. And the cases that they normally would get called on, now they're front and center because they're using the software for the basic stuff. And they can when they get that call saying, no, the software doesn't do this, but we can. Um, have you found because of the fact that this is software that's you know, a more sophisticated, uh, that it's cannibalizing at all your, your current clients. Cause you're going from, uh, you know, software from service in that sense. I mean, are you, do you want to sell this stuff to the people that are already clients? Does it wind up being, I know you mentioned that you can kind of back up, uh, the work done. So like maybe two licenses, if you're in trial, someone in the office, a paralegal can be prepping you. I mean, have you found that to be an experience as far as, uh, uh um, your clients may be turning into, I can try to do this alone now because I got the software or is it, uh, is it a different type of a firm or a client that would buy the software versus would hire a consultant? Uh, a lot of our clients use it. And, you know, a, 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 
something I've lived by for a while is if you don't if you're not willing to cannibalize yourself someone's going to come along and do it for you so I would rather be out there in the front of that uh, in the front of that line um, saying okay if you're gonna if you're gonna not if be doing this thing on your own be using our product for it but we'll always do you know we'll, we'll always uh, be able to use it the best but I mean I guess that's sorry that's a different point which is this industry gets they just expect more and more and more from you they being the clients the attorneys um the stuff that we did 15 20 years ago was so basic because that's what you could do and so just like just like you know look there's video editing tools that you can get on your phone you can get iMovie on your phone everybody has access to that it does not mean everybody's good at it you know if you want a real video made you've got to go to someone who knows what they're doing with the tool and so why not be the one that's in charge of that of that tool and have uh you know have have the uh the ability to make it do what you need it to do, but um, to answer your question on the at, the at the the bottom line there, I'm not really worried about <laughs> making it harder for people to do the job that we do for them. If there's if they can take this software and do it on their own, I don't deserve to be getting paid by the hour to do it. Then it's e- that means it's too easy. That's true. Um, but you, you know, said- so- something harder will come along. A harder challenge will come along that they need us for. You said on your website, simple enough for anyone to learn in fifteen minutes. Mm-hmm. What's your what's your what's your take there? Well, if you read what it says under that, it says, "Should any professional tool be described like that?" On cue is not difficult, but it's not a one-trick <laughs> pony either. That's un- that's under the on cue is not section. Right. On cue is not simple enough to be for anyone to learn in 15 minutes. And I, so, uh, you, you, you do not see Adobe jumping out with Photoshop uh, or After Effects or anything like that saying anyone can learn this in 15 minutes, and that's what makes it great. <laughs> All right. So let me let me ask you. Here I am. I'm 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 a user. I've used one of the one of the big three, and I'm 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 ready to take a look at this thing, Eric. What do I need to do? Well, there's a couple of things. If you're quick, you can go on. You can just go on the website, and you put in a card number, but it doesn't charge you for a week, and you can cancel it uh, during that first week. So you've got a week to play with it. Um, I, I get to generally. I think if someone even has a month or two months, they're only going to spend a couple of days on it anyway. Um, but because of the way we have it set up as is subscription based. We don't want to automatically give away a month because someone could just keep getting that over and over again with different email addresses. So basically you email us and you say, I would like a month demo to try it out. And I'm going to give you a month. My field's generous. Give you two months, 45 days or something like that. Um, we're not we're not stingy with it. Uh, we want people to learn it and we want people to try it. Um, so there's not a lot of, you know, and we don't hassle you. Uh, if you get a demo version, you're not going to get a call from us uh, forcing you to tell us what you think of it. Now let's, uh, let's, we leave you alone until you come to us. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that pricing structure because this is new. Nobody, nobody else in the industry seems to be doing this. You guys have an annual, you have a monthly, and you have an enterprise. Of course, the best value is the annual at $65 a month. Let's talk about that for a minute. Um, $65 a month. What do, what do I get for my $65 a month? Uh, you get full support. Our support staff is – it's different. I think it's different from anywhere else because it's all active. We've got um, – I think we're up to eight now. There's eight active trial techs who use OnQ every day. So if you go onto our support site and you send a message, that's who gets it. And that's who and that's who's responding to you. Is, is, and nobody has to – ever escalate it um there's a well myself and nancy have to do it if you're wanting to release a license or something like that because we only have, we have the tool to do that but in general um and there's no there's no hours now maybe somebody doesn't get back to you immediately if it's 3 a.m we haven't hit that point yet where we have to pay people to stay up all night but uh we have everyone in every time zone in the continental u.s um and it's it's not uncommon for me to get back to someone at eleven thirty on a Sunday night, uh, figure out what you know what their problem is. And frankly, there's not that many problems. We have not been overwhelmed, uh, even with a with a good solid amount of users. Um, 
we've yet to get overwhelmed by support calls or or, or support emails. Now, what, what here's the thing. I mean, let's let's put this in perspective, okay? It's if if you go the $65 a month route, it's $780 for the year, okay? Yep. If you haven't made that back in day 1, of, of a trial in day one, you don't need to be in this business. So, so that was the calculation. That was that was that was the calculation, and that's where and that's where it came from. It's like you should be able to make that before lunch in one day on this. You know, that's exactly right. So you've yeah. paid, you've paid for your year in one trial. Let's let's get it straight. Let's call it what it is. What's the difference though? As I'm as I'm looking here, uh, and I'm you know I'm a numbers guy. I'm seeing a sixty five a month annual. And a monthly of eighty. So the sixty-five a month, I need to go ahead. The annual, I pay my seven eighty right up front. Correct. Yep. And then, or I can do a month to month with no commitment, eighty bucks a month, and and I'm in. Yep. Have you had any kind of? Have you had any kind of? And it's a two for one gig, right? It is. Yeah, you got two two machines for every license, and that includes my that includes my tech support. That includes what about what about training? What about training and and things like that, Eric? Because I know a lot of people are concerned about that. What about training? Yeah, this goes back to the uh, <laughs> we know how to make it really well. We're really good at that, but uh, the putting it on the market and all that stuff, uh, we're still ramping up on all that stuff. So. Where we uh, where we stand on that is we've got some, uh, especially over at RLM, they've done a really good job of putting some training programs together for their folks internally, and we are working on uh, parlaying that into a, a, a broader training program. But we don't have any like training for revenue going on yet. Um, one of our you know one of our guys today did uh, did training with a uh, with a law firm. Uh, that just started just started using it, and it's just you know just on the house. We just we want people to use it. You know, we'll spend a couple of hours or whatever you need on the phone with a screen share, uh, getting you up to speed and answering your questions. Uh, so right now the training is basically take it as it comes. You know, but the thing you know going back to when we first started selling it it was the beta testers and these were people these were people who wanted it and understood it already and the training was happening internally like somebody at a company would know how to do it they would train the rest of their company so it's just now as as word is starting to to take hold training becoming an issue so we'll we'll put something together for that but we're not there yet um but it's not something that costs extra yet you know we'll we'll come up with some sort of system for that though people have questions questions that i didn't touch on josh didn't touch on where do they go to where do they go to get that that's that that's the support site where you send a message um that's it i mean someone's going to get back to you real fast uh we pride ourselves on responsiveness um i i do it in in all parts of my life and you know all everything professional not just on cue um so yeah we don't leave you know if someone sends in an email question especially if you call you're going to get you're going to get someone on the phone um and that might be the right way to go. But I mean, if somebody, if you really have a question and you send it to email, you'll have a response ridiculously fast. And there's no automatic, you know, your email is important to us. We're going to process it. You'll hear back from someone in 48 hours. Everyone hates that. No one does that. We respond to everyone as though they're our most important client. Is there any, any, uh, future for, uh, for the iPad? Yeah, there's a big future for the iPad. There's, um, you know, even years ago, I had worked up some stuff, um, and it's not putting on cue on the iPad. Uh, uh, th- you know, that might happen, but with the the market we're looking at, I mean, it's it's it wouldn't work. Um, and I've seen, you know, I, we've had a couple of you know arbitrations and small things where the other side shows up with the iPad apps, and. Uh, we ended up having to play their video and show their documents because, you know, it all fell apart. Not saying that they can't ever work. I'm sure someone would love to chime in and tell me how they can. But uh, all I have ever seen is someone who says, wow, this is the iPad. It must be easy. And then they've got to play, you know, four or five hours of deposition video. And there's rulings on that video. And that just falls apart. And you need a real system on a real computer to handle it. Um, and that's where we're focused right now. We, we're focused on what's happening right now and not trying to anticipate the future. When the future happens, uh, everyone can just catch up to it then. 
gotta love the people that paved the that you know that paved the way. But I it, I don't I don't really see any benefit to us trying to do that. I mean, this is the legal industry for God's sakes. We're probably you know we're still prying law firms off of Windows ninety five. So it's gonna be a little while. At least you didn't say word perfect. <laughs> well, and, you know that's there too. You just can't pry them away from that. Is the reason I didn't say it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's, uh, uh, the ideas for the iPad go outside of putting everything on the iPad. I think they're pretty cool. I've actually got a couple of different iPad ideas that have been, uh, back but, uh, as things ramp up, they'll probably move back to the front again, but we've got a lot of stuff in the, you know, we have a, what we refer to as the list when we say it's on the list is this really cool program called Trello where you have columns and in every column there's cards and you can drag them up and down and throw them back and forth into different things. So it's basically we can reprioritize all the time based on are we getting a lot of feedback about something? You know, is there a bug that needs to be dealt with? And we do all the uh, – the, um, conversation with the developer actually stays inside these cards and each car each card is a feature um so each each card is, is like an individual upgrade or some sort of either a totally new feature or an upgrade on an existing feature and that's where he asks questions and and we give the answers and put new ideas and stuff that's the list but you'll hear that from me a lot if you call in with questions it's it's on the list and where where it sits on the list depends on how often we hear about it for those of you that are probably like Rob and I quickly going to our internet and checking out the website for Trello, that's a T-R-E-L-L-O dot com. Uh, it looks like it's free on some level. I'm sure the, the when you actually want to share it with somebody, you probably pay something for it. But uh. yeah, you know, it's actually it's actually free for quite a while. You've got to upgrade to gold, which I'm not really seeing what all it's getting me that's making my life any easier. Uh, we've been using it for free for years. Um but not to take away with the fact that they probably need to get some revenue on it. Uh, it's a great tool for collaborating. All right. We'll have to add that to that. That'll be our official app for the day in the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Trello. Well, you know, I'll tell you what we we are we are at the end of our at the end of our show, and and I'll tell you, Eric, I I, I always count it a pleasure. Uh, to talk to leaders in the industry. And, you know, I, I had an opportunity to uh, spend a lot of time uh, sitting about uh, four and a half feet away from Donnie um, in New Orleans. And uh, I watched this program work. Uh, I think out of all the technology consultants that were there, Donnie and I were the only two that were live, meaning we didn't know what was coming ahead of time and we just went with whatever they threw at us. Um, and, you know, that was him working with BP and myself working with Halliburton. And uh, we all had uh, pretty heavy roles in that. And uh, the software uh, certainly performed uh, flawlessly, and uh, Donnie did a great job. And but I always counted a pleasure to be able to talk to uh, people in the industry and get their feedback. I know, um, you know, a lot of times people want to hear war stories too, but right now this was more uh, about OnQ. And once again, you can check the product out on QTech.com. Uh, I've had the opportunity to look at it. I, I have no criticisms. I have no complaints. I have no, no, really no feedback to give uh, because I haven't really kicked it and beat the living hell out of it yet. But uh, I, I definitely appreciate you being on the show, and I think uh, I think you're definitely onto something. And and we're definitely going to see another uh, power player on the block. And so thank you very much for coming on. Right on. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot, guys. Well, Eric, thank you for uh, for joining us today. Uh, I think we've all learned a little bit of something about you, your your history, your software, and some interesting features I don't think I'd heard of before, and I think uh, Rob might have heard a few new tricks of the trade as well. That's our goal on the show. So uh, those of you that are listening, have a thought, a comment, a question, an idea, we want to hear from you. You know, our Twitter, our Twitter account is uh, what's what's that Twitter account again, there, Rob? Just don't put the V. It's at Trial Tech Cast. T R I A L T E C H C A S T. You know, I really, I'm, I'm real interested in the way this thing's processing documents, and I'm, I'm very interested in their video tools. Um, 
you know, as we talked about at the beginning of the show, you know, uh, I talked about tapeless workflow and I still shoot video and do video depositions. And, you know, the, the problem that I have is it's, it's, uh, I, I'm using MPEG 4 and they are only MPEG 1. And so I can use MPEG 4 in, in, in trial director. So, uh, I, you know, I don't know. I, I, I'm very interested in what they're doing, and I, I think Eric is a great – he made a great guest. Um, I, I certainly enjoyed the interview with him, and you know, I think people are going to try this thing out. I think people are going to look. You know, I know some other products have tried to come out on the market and – you know, have been an absolute flop. But I, I like what he, I like what he had to say, and and I like the uh, fact that they're trying to move the industry forward, and they themselves are hot seat guys. So, uh, you know, uh, coming up, I'm sure that uh, there's going to be some other guys that are going to want to jump in on this thing and uh, talk about their software and what they're currently doing. And that's what this is for. Uh, but I think that's definitely what the listeners need is informative stuff like that. We should have kept the tape rolling and uh, brought him brought him on for another hour of just war stories because this guy's been through some some good ones and and that would have been great just to get some war stories out of him. But sometime we'll we'll definitely be able to do that. I agree, and uh, you know some of the stuff you mentioned uh, when you talk about the uh, the importing of documents and. The remapping. I remember in the, in the, the older programs, and I don't know if that's something that's changed. Uh, maybe some of you that are using the other software that's out there can respond to this, but I remember having to go in and say, it's not the G drive anymore, it's the Z drive, it's the B drive. Uh, so that was interesting to me, at least from my standpoint and what I'm using now. Um, and, uh, you know, I do agree that the, the format wars need to kind of take a step forward and and, you know, in my business and what I deal with, uh, you know, it would be great if everyone sent me it in the perfect format to begin with. Uh, but I do think having at least a few options of what, what you're going to produce in to have ready for trial is better than trying to stick to one single standard and being limited to that. So hopefully you know, that's something that will evolve as well. Well, when he said when he said the pathing didn't matter, I mean, my you know, I think my chin hit my desk because oh, I was yes. like, whoa, you know, I've used that global path editor uh, so many times because he, here's the thing: what what people, what non-power users do not realize about most of these softwares is that they are nothing more than a portal. They are nothing more than a shell. So you don't load something into Trial Director. You don't right. load something into Sanction. All you do is create a pointer, right. a place for it to point to. I, I've, I've watched so many people move a file. Out of their out of their folder that they're using, they've moved a file somehow, or they've renamed it, or they've somehow, and then they can't figure out why it doesn't come up. Well, right. the Microsoft Access Database in the backside is where everything's taking place. What you see is nothing more than a shell. It's just simply a portal that says "Go here" and tells the program what to do. When he said that there were no paths. Man, that that really uh, uh, wet my beak, so to speak. Uh, for those of you who have seen my nose, you will laugh at that uh, at, at that that term. But I, that that really, I, I, I want to take a look further at the no pathing issue because now you've dealt with it yourself, where something's had been pathed wrong. And if I send you, if I take a drive, if I take a drive right now, and I send you a drive. You have to map exactly to that drive and have the same volume yep. ID and everything. If they've eliminated that, that's money in the bank. Yeah. Um, and the other piece I liked uh, about their model, at least uh, the pricing model, the way it, it was presented to us, is the flexibility of uh, a license for a month or two. And that's not going to break the bank. You need to scale up for a second trial or a couple more pieces of equipment. I'll be interested to see how that works out uh, Obviously, you, you want to keep at least uh, <laughs> one license going to be able to prep for trials and things. But uh, as, a, as a person that works in, uh, in, uh, with a team of 150 attorneys, uh, there's always more than one trial going on. So it's nice to have that ability for the back end to be able to prep things and then to scale up only when you need to. 
I like the fact that he was willing to uh, throw that demo license out there for 30 to 45 days to whatever and let somebody say, hey, go ahead and kick our tires. Go ahead and test drive this thing, and we're going to give you full functionality. I mean everybody nowadays seems to do that because nobody's going to buy a car you know, without a test drive. But uh, I, I think that uh, – I think this thing could go somewhere. That was on, uh, on cue and uh, – I you know, I, time will tell. Time will tell, and once – you know, everybody says they have a great product, no doubt. I mean everybody says that their product is better than the next guy. But at the same time, you know, the proof is going to be in the pudding. Cream always rises to the top, and uh, I'm certainly interested in giving it some time. And the reason I say giving it some time is because that we all know what's going on with the Apple Watch. Uh, that thing right now <laughs> seems to be the biggest flop ever, but it could turn into the greatest thing since sliced bread once they get the bugs work at, worked out. The one thing I thought about Eric's deal and looking at their website, though, is they said it was battle-tested. Uh, they've used this thing time and time again. They've got over a 1,000 trials with it. And hey, you know, uh, numbers don't lie. And so uh, if this thing works, I'm definitely interested. We're going to try to drop this podcast every Tuesday morning. This thing should drop on iTunes uh, and, and you know, subscribe to us. The more subscribers we have, the better. It automatically comes to your device of choice, whatever you use, to uh, stream your podcasts. And the more people we have that subscribe, the better the content we can get because the more uh, people tell other people. And uh, for our listeners, that's who we do this for. Uh, we don't get paid to do this. Uh, we don't draw any – we don't have any advertisers. We don't have any sponsors. We have nothing. This is simply on our own dime and our own time. And Let me jump in on that real quick, Rob. I just want to reiterate, you know, we're vendor agnostic here. Uh, thank you. We appreciate uh, Eric from OnQ coming on and, and talking to us. But we want to hear from all of you. We, you know, we're not, we're not picking the best. We want to present – the features of each and let you, the users, the listeners, give you a feedback so we can have an educated community uh, answer to what works best for who and when. Well, I, and I'd love to, and I'm going to tell you, we're so agnostic, we'd be more than willing to let the, the, the big four now or whatever, we'd be willing to let everybody come on and, and talk all at the same time. Of course, we'd have to moderate it, but I think that could make for an interesting conversation. But anyway, we thank you for coming on once again at Trial Tech Cast on Twitter. Uh, for Josh Collar, I'm Rob Helt, and we'll see you next week with another guest.